Not the first time a troll wanted to fuck me and then I, he became a, a, a fan. All right, guys, we're going to start. I was away four or five days. I went to Paris. And then all of a sudden, my buddy Tim Sykes saw me in Paris. He goes, dude, I'm over in Positano, Italy. So I fucking, I literally just fucking booked a flight like a few hours, like 10 hours before the flight. And I flew out there. Had no sleep because the flight was at 6 in the morning. But I made it over there to see him. It's been a while, long time since I've seen him. A lot of the people go, hey, didn't you hate Sykes back in the day? You know what, man? I known Sykes before Sykes was Sykes. I known him before he was this big trader guy persona. So I know his real personality. Uh, he's a really nice guy, very generous. He's actually a goofball, dork, a nerd, whatever you want to call it. He's a really nice guy. But then he became famous because he, he created his alter ego. You know, it was this douchebag guy, and it worked. It worked, dude. He he became a very big, big guy. So hate him what you want, but you know what, man? That was by design. His personality is by design. Um, oh, flip the camera. Let's see what I fuck I look like. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my hat today, guys. Uh, okay. So so Sykes is actually a good guy. So. You know, the, the point of the story is this, guys. Uh, you know what, man? In life, you you know, you know, choose what you want to be in life. You know, uh, people hate him, but he's so successful in what he does. And now he's building schools. His, his goal is to build a thousand schools. He built a couple hundred schools around the world, uh, especially Asia. So I, um, I might, MIC actually might be build schools along with that. MIC actually donated some money uh, to his cause, which is the Afghanistan. So go to the Tim Sykes, Karma Walga, whatever, um, how you pronounce it, um, and donate for a good cause, guys. As much as you guys may hate Tim Sykes, he's the guy that got most of you guys into the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Marketing-wise, he got you guys thinking about trading. And so that's how you end up at MIC. A lot of the students from from uh, Sykes program goes to MIC too. So it's not like no, we, we, you know, I, I hated him back in the day because he was pumping and dumping. But to be honest, I was pissed because, you know, who's this guy? How did he get so popular? Why is he so, why do people know him instead of uh, us, right? And so a lot of the times, guys, it's, you know, it's kind of jealousy, envy, whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm a big enough man to admit that, you know, I was wrong about him back in the day. Uh, just like a lot of people have been wrong about me and MIC and Alex and all that. So... You know, man, I've been friends with him before that persona that he blew up. And then I realized that that was just a, his persona. That's not his real thing, right? And so me walking around this fucking pond, I don't fucking sit around here walking pond all day long. That is what I do to teach you guys. Because, you know, it helps me exercise. It kind of like, you know, calms me down. But I'm not sitting here fucking walking around the pond every single day. I, I do this for you guys. So that's my online persona. When you look at me, you thought, oh, this, this guy, he drinks a lot. He pours a lot. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But the point is... If I can do it, guys, you guys can do it, right? If I am not a perfect guy, I drink, I party, I don't wake up on time, and I still manage to do white quite well trading, you guys can too. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because, you know what, man? I humbled myself today, just humbled myself to admit why the hatred between Sykes, it was not really a hatred. It was just me trying to help him because I used to be his friend, and he, I thought he kind of went the wrong path. And so now he came back to the right path, you know? And so it all worked, man. That's how friendships happen. Uh, you all fight with siblings, brothers, sisters. But then at the end of the day, you're still brothers and sisters, right? So that's Sykes, man. Tim is going to be my friend forever because uh, I know his true self. He's one of the most generous guys in the world, man. He he set up a car for me to go to Positano. He laid out the red carpet. The house was amazing. He paid for it. What can you say about the guy, right? Uh, so... Look past what you want. You can say anything. You know, man, you can be an angel and there would still be someone that hates you. So it doesn't matter. Um, bottom line is this. Okay, I want to start there. So, so as, well, as I was away to on my vacation, damn, I look like shit. Where's my hat? Uh, as, as I was away from vacation, damn, this is an ugly. going to see me, right? When I was away to on vacation, I had so much FOMO, guys. So what I did was this. I actually did quite well. I traded three days on vacation. Three days. I made $3,000 each day. Walking around just like this in Paris. You saw me. I posted a lot of that. I'm walking around and doing touristy stuff. 
placing trades on my freaking laptop. Not, not my laptop, my, my phone, I mean, my phone. And you know what I did? I used Alex's watch list once again. Because I'm lazy, dude. I, I mean, <laughs> I should be right on vacation. So I don't know what the hell's going on. So I'm actually, so Alex lists each day in his watch list along with Tom Diesel, some other moderators, um, their watch list. Basically, they tell in detail the plays that they're looking at. So they scour all the scanners for you. And so I use that as a cheat code, right? A cheat sheet. And so I'm like, okay, these are the plays that are happening. I'm gonna pick the plays I like, and then I'm gonna trade them. And I did one thing further, guys. I eliminated the day one plays. I stuck to the highest probability plays, which is for short trading, it's called the low hanging fruit. That's what we created. We actually created this strategy called the low hanging fruit. It's a day two continuation breakdown kind of play. And so that's all I did because I didn't want any stress. Day ones, you can get trapped. You can trade day ones perfectly, but then if you overstay and if you're on the mobile phone and something happens to your Wi-Fi, which happens all the time when I'm in Paris, it goes dead, right? I can get squeezed. But the highest probability for a low-hanging fruit, I'm, I'm telling you like 90-something percent. But it, when it doesn't work, I stop out. So I stuck to the low-hanging fruit and I made $3,000 each and every day walking the streets of Paris, guys. Think about this. I made $9,000 <laughs> during the three days I was in Paris. 9000 bucks, guys. That paid for the vacation. You know? So I was very blessed. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I've been doing this for a long time. We share and we... The strategies that I use, strategies that Alex uses, um, the members learn. And all I'm doing is I'm pulling up the watch list. I'm seeing what the low-hanging fruits are. And I'm avoiding day one players. And I'm making $3,000 a day, guys. Placing fantasy orders on my phone. And then, when they fill, placing the covers. You can also use OCO orders, so, so you don't have to check your phone at all. And the OCO order, we talk about a conditional trigger order, where it says if you fill, you're going to just set the entry price, the stop price, and the exit for profit price. All in one order. It's called an OCO. We talk about this. We teach this. It's called a trigger OCO order. We have videos on this in our video library. Uh, people can claim they have the largest library in the world, but without search, it's useless. We actually have a search on our video library. So if you want to learn about OC orders, uh, trigger orders, whatever, you go search that up, okay? So while I was on vacation, think about this, man. I made 9,000 bucks. Traceable size. I was in a big size. I am on my fucking phone. So can you do that? That is legitimately trade from anywhere. So you can trade from anywhere, guys. The key is to know which stocks to avoid. People are training their phones, the, what we call the hot chicks of the day, the most volatile crap. That's how they lose, that, that's gambling, man. I can barely, you know, man, you can barely trade that on a laptop. You can barely trade on a home computer. How the hell are you gonna trade like on a, like a, on a fucking little phone, right? And so I limited all the risky plays. I did only the low hanging fruit shorts. You can make a living off of that. I, think about this, I made $3,000 every day. Who else there? Three days I was there, made $9,000, guys. Trading the plays that people forget. The, the plays that I played was not the ones that are, are on scanner. These are the low-hanging fruits that broke down for the day before. And we have this part of our watch list, guys. We teach you how to trade these. So if you wanted to trade one setup, if you are a short buy trader and you want to trade one short setup, it is the low-hanging fruit that MIC teaches, guys. And it's like, dude, I was so... I'm, you know, when you make money that easy, guys, seriously, be honest, I was so fucking pissed. Because in my head, I was thinking, fuck, if I make $3,000 walking around the streets, I could probably make $10,000 at home. So I'm like, maybe I should run in my fucking uh, <laughs> uh, hotel and start trading on the laptop. But that's how you get greedy, guys. That's how you blow up. You know, you take what the process gives you. The process says, this is how you're going to trade you know, you don't want to force anything. You trade something. The reason I made that is because I traded a size that was comfortable for me while I was walking around. If I was oversized walking around, I'd be fucking cooking me fresh on my phone. I'd be nervous wreck. I would not enjoy my vacation. So I walked around, made three grand. I made that within the first 15 minutes of each day, first hour of each day. And I'm just walking around. I'm not even refreshing my phone because the low hanging fruit, I'm so confident. I put a stop loss out there, right? So you can put a stop loss out there as well. So 
How do you currently use hard stops? We have videos on how to properly take a stop block, guys. You guys have no idea. You join MIC, you watch that, it'll change your fucking perspective on how to stop, take a stop loss. But in short, most people take a, loss, a stop loss at the herd level. That's why you lose. You put at an obvious stop and everyone gets jacked up. I don't use those obvious stops. I use time-based stops as one. That's one thing that no one talks about, time-based stops. And we talk about that. Another thing is, uh, you can see percentage or whatever. So the common thing that people do is, okay, if it breaks, if it breaks the seven dollar line, I'm gonna take a stop loss. So what happens is, the algo goes hits you seven oh two, comes back down. You're like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm fucking out, I'm out at the top, right? But so we talk about this, guys. You guys do not be cheap. Uh, Alex, do we still have that sale for ninety nine bucks? Alex likes putting the sale. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to devalue MIC, but you know what, man? People don't believe that MIC works. Guys, are in MIC. Does MIC work? Does the process work? You're in the MIC every day. Tell everybody that's not in the MIC how MIC is. So, you know, people think, oh, there's no way Bell makes money. There's no way Alex makes money. I, I knock on wood. I, I think I've just, it's been like two weeks since I've had a red day. You know, knock on wood. And then, you know, even on vacation, I made three days of 3,000 profit. You know, today I came back and I made money. And the scary thing, Alex, do we still have that sale of $99? Go to our website, guys. Sign up for the 99 bucks before it's too late. Because when that site is gone, maybe we're going to change our race. Because Alex wants to raise race because he's kind of pissed off. You know, like we do so much work and no one appreciates it. Seriously. I mean, I am, even on vacation, Alex will go on vacation. I'm in MIC chat, on my phone, on my Slack. You're going to ask the MIC guys. I'm answering DMs on my vacation at midnight. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. You know, people don't understand until they see it. I mean, these strategies we have fucking work. It will fuck the strategies for, to supplement your income. You know, if you want to be a guy making a million dollars a year, you can definitely do it. You know what a million dollars a year is? $4,000 a day. $4,000 a day. That's it, man. I mean, 3000 a day walking around Paris on my phone. It's not a million dollars a year, but shit, man. Even if I made a supplemental income of hundred grand. You know, a year, that's fucking life changing for most people, right? You keep your day job. Don't don't fucking lose your day job. So that covers Paris. You know, I, I so the key is, you know, back in the day, you want to be in the action. Now I want a stress-free day. So we pick the easiest stocks to trade. It's never easy. I'm talking about easier trades, easiest trades of the hard bunch. And that's why I did it in Paris, right? So I walked around, clicked a few buttons and made money. Um, Zombie Rule saved this from SPRT. I posted that in Twitter. Take a look at my charts on Twitter. Um, I covered it right at 1030, the Zombie Rule. And from 1030, ran on. So Zombie Rule helps short sellers avoid being squeezed like SPRT, as well as it helps long bias traders make money, guys. If you're a long bias trader, dude, Zombie Hour is your hour. SPRT, I even told the guys when I covered, I posted a chart, says, this is gonna zombie, you know? I didn't go long. I'm not the best trader in the world. I was the best trader in the world. I would fucking switch bias. But you know, I, I do what's comfortable for me. I stay within my niche. You know, I can make money going both ways. But there's certain styles that I like, prefer, and I stick to it. You don't have to be the best trader in the world, guys. You know, I mean, if I can make a million dollars a year trading, you know, I mean, I'm happy with that shit, right? I don't need to make 10 million being stressed out, so. And then when I come back from trading, guys, it's very important because I, today, man, I finally had good sleep. I was jet lagged. And I woke up like, oh my God, I want to trade. I want to bank. I want to come back and, and just kill it. And that's the mentality that's going to get you killed. So today I made a conscious es effort to say, bow. Do not get FOMO. Do not get FOMO. I know you really want to trade today because you haven't traded in a week on your, on your computer. So size the fuck down. Obey your lines. Obey your risk. You know, and so I did that, and I did great today. You know, I almost made what I made in the week in in Paris. You know, <laughs> but um, and then when you make money, you always think, "Damn, man, if I sized up, I would bank it." But that's how you lose your money, guys. Keep your process sized to the appropriate level. The the secret, actually, guys, is to size down and widen your stops. That is the remedy for most traders that are inconsistent because they. First of all, they don't know what a stop loss is. They don't use risk management. They wait, don't wait for the lines. But one of the key things is size downs, guys. When you have problems, size down and widen your risk. 
Uh, let me see what else i want to bring on a oh yeah one last thing man there's a lot of people that are having difficulties in this market last year when there was a pandemic stocks just went up and up and up and up people thought it was going to go down they're short squeezes so you just make mistakes break rules and get away from it i see traders throw risk management out the window and making millions and me and alex is looking at each other like Wait until that shit doesn't work anymore. All it takes is one, two bad trades and you're gonna wipe out your account. And that's, that's exactly what we've seen today. We are seeing the market shift back to its choppy self. And you see these traders, they used to be so arrogant. I'm the best, we're the best. Why are you in my room? I'm the fucking best. No one trades like me. I have a, I have a thousand percent win rate, whatever the hell it may be, right? And then, boom, night and day. Oh my God, it's manipulation. There's an algo. I can't do this. Why the fuck this dog is fucking me up? I don't Shut the fuck up, dude. That's because you fucking donkey, man. You can only trade easy markets? You see how ridiculous? If, if, if your guru is complaining right now, get the fuck out of your room. What? You can only, you can only trade the easy shit? So you're telling me it's like a basketball player. All I can do is a layup. Nothing else. No free throws. No three pointers. No, no fucking shooting. You can't guard. All you can do is fucking lay up. You want that guy to be on your fucking team? No, dude. Last year was a fucking layup for most traders. That's why they have the best careers of their fucking life. And then last year, people, people all become fucking gurus. I'm the fucking best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Join my service. I'm, you see how many. Me, how many fake traders started a service last year because I had one good year or one good month? I see YouTube fuckers who barely started trading, podcasters start services and pretend they're the best. And now they're like, I don't know what the fuck to do. You, you guys have not even seen a bear market. It's been a 12 year bull market run. Wait until the bear market comes. I've been there, man. I see a lot of motherfuckers because of the dot com when everything went up they thought they were great where the fuck are they now how many guys are still alive and still doing this not many me one of them you know during these giant runs it's not my style to make tens of million in one year because i don't risk that i don't need to risk it guys i am a very consistent normal guy making my money every fucking day you know man i make more money i can spend right now you know I don't have a big lifestyle. I'm not buying fucking private jets. You know, I'm taking care of my, you know, my, my, my family. I'm good enough, right? So you're going to see the markets change. You'll see these guys complain. And they don't know what the fuck to do. Because they're not real mentors. They haven't been through it. They had one or two consistent years. And now they're crying. They don't know what the fuck to do. I see one guy, a pumper guy, said, I'm going to stop trading in my big account. I'm going to use my little dick account, my little account my small account, because that's a pupper account, so that I can pump more people. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm gonna stop trading my big account cause, because I wanna close this month green. What the fuck, Why? who gives a fuck you close this month green? What's the fucking difference? Oh, I know, because they're trying to pump it for their service, guys. They don't know how, what to do when they lose. They, they, the problem they have is this. They cannot understand why the market is doing what it's doing. You dumbass. You think the market's gonna keep doing the same thing over and over? It's gonna give you layups over and over? That's because you have no idea how to fucking properly trade. You're a, you're a fucking donkey. All you do is buy, buy, buy. Yeah, no risk. And then the, and then you have fucking, then you revenge trade and you, and you go, oh, 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 the algos, the algos, the algos manipulation. It's, it, it won't bounce. No shit won't bounce, donkey. You have no risk management. You think? stock should do what you think it does you would be a billionaire by now why is it that your best year is in the year of the pandemic where it was a layup think about this i made money through the toughest markets in the world and i'm still here these guys make money in the easiest markets in the world and then they cry when it doesn't do what they're <laughs> man i don't know why you guys paid these fuckers man seriously man i'm so sick of this shit if you if, if okay i'm gonna say this one thing alex you gotta listen to this shit man People always end up at MIC because they blow up from other services, okay? Then they say, Val, Alex, 
I can't afford you because I already spent $8,000 on my last idiot furu. Can you give me a discount? The answer is to be fuck you. No. No. Why the fuck? Why the fuck can you pay $8,000 to them and you can't even pay $99, $100 to us? What the fuck am I, a charity case anymore? You know, it's like, but 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 I thought these guys are showing giant P&Ls and they don't know what they're doing. You see, man, you got fucking fooled. But why are we have to fucking, you see, you see the weird ass shit? It's like, oh, I lost all my money to the scammer. Can you help me and give me a discount? I cannot afford $100 a month. It's like, okay. You know, what, what, what the fuck are we, dude? Seriously. You know, we tell you that, you know, you can fucking tell already, man, who's fucking making money and who knows what they're doing. You never see me and Alex cry. When we lose, it's because we, we, we fucked up. It's not because of Marcus. You think the Marcus should be easy forever? You dumbass. Seriously, man, I hate those guys. Seriously. All they do is they're going to blow up their students. I don't give a fuck what they do because you know what, man? They can make money. They have money. It doesn't fucking matter. What I'm pissed about is they are ruining the reputations of real educators out there. They're ruining the lives of so many, so many. Oh man, my hair is nasty. They're ruining the lives of so many people and that we have to fix it. It's a common occurrence all the time, guys. It's a common occurrence every freaking day. Can you give me a discount? How much money do you want discount? It's 99 fucking dollars. We have a sale at 99 dollars. What the fuck you want, man? Can you have free? I mean, fuck, dude. If you're, if you're a chick, a good-looking chick, maybe you can call up Alex or Tosh and I. Send me your your photo and maybe you work something out. But unless... I'm just joking about that. But but no, dude. I mean, I'm so sick of fucking having to be the person that cleans everybody up. And I, I've been doing this for 20 years. So, okay. Uh, Steve, raise your hand. Where are you, Steve? Alex, we still have the $99. I, I didn't read their, your message. Um... But you better, you better get on it because I, I don't really like that self, seriously, guys. The people that join that fucking sale, they, they're so entitled. You know, they're like, oh. I'm like, dude, 99 fucking dollars. You can't fucking afford 99 dollars? They'd be like, what the fuck? Like, take a look at what you spent today on this month, guys. How much did you spend going out to eat? Bottle service. Take a look at your fucking dumbass looking shirt, t-shirt you're wearing that you pay $100 for. You know, or your, whatever you clothes you wear. You know, you fell for this marketing thing that makes you zero dollars, but you don't want to invest in your education. I made enough today to fucking afford all these dumbass fucking bottle service already. You know, in one fucking hour of trading, Alex and I stopped today in one hour to make sure that we want to teach the members about the zombie rule for shorts. So I stopped and I I walked around doing this IG live for you guys. I'm gonna bring Steve on. Raise your hand, Steve. Damn, my hair is so ugly. <laughs> you know, life is good when all you care about is how your hair looks <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Worked an hour chilling and helping members. I love it. Uh, Steve, where are you, man? I want to tell the amazing story of Steve. Steve, Steve, where is he? Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I see it, Steve. They, 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 uh, they grouped it with some other guy. Okay, Steve. Uh, travel guy. There we go. Go send request. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you who Steve is, okay? Before he comes on. Hey, Bob. Hey, welcome. Before you talk, I'm going to introduce you who you are, okay, man? Cool. Um, this is, oh, my God, man. This is the best Cinderella story in the world. Not like you're Cinderella, but you're like Prince Charming, right? But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? This is the craziest fucking story. This you cannot script a movie better than this. And maybe one day, people have been telling you, me actually write a script about my life. Because it's crazy. Alex knows, man. My life could be a reality show. <laughs> um, but Steve, <laughs> Steve, we, we had, so we had two free, actually three now, uh, free lifetime giveaways for MIC. And we threw a promotion where you can win a free lifetime membership at MIC. I actually randomly, Alex and I randomly did a, ge- a random number generator, and Steve won. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? I actually know Steve from back in the day. So it was not Cordy, I swear. This is all, I'm like, holy shit, you know? And Steve, I remember Steve from a long time ago. He always, because he knows I trade, and he's always asking yeah. me to help. But then he's trading his dumb ass shit like Forex. <laughs> what the fuck are you trading Forex? I think I got a plan, I think I, I think I have a strategy. 
and then he would lose his money. And I'm like, you're trading the most bullshit, manipulative bullshit. So do you know how I know it's bullshit, something's bullshit, when there's so many scammers involved in it. Yeah. Okay? Who is scamming? People scamming Forex. That's the biggest bullshit scammer you see on Instagram, right? Every day, Forex, easy, easy. You have these African fucking guys driving Bentleys. I mean, what the fuck? Trey from Nigeria, you know? I mean, fuck. And so Steve, I keep telling Steve, man, you idiot. Stop trading Forex and learn to trade stocks. Equity stocks like we do. And Steve comes in, but he, he already had tons of bad habits. Bro, I don't know how the hell he learned this bad habit. Like, what the fuck are you doing? So after one year, yeah, I think he almost gave up. And then we did this yeah. giveaway, and he won. And then um, go post the video, Alex. Find that video where he won. I think we, he was on IG Live, too. And then, and then all of a sudden, dude, I mean, it, it, it was not overnight, obviously. He worked his ass off for a few months. And then he started learning it. And then we made him a junior moderator. Because you know what? Yeah. I'm like, holy crap. This, this guy went from... Forex, blowing up on Forex, to learning, and the reason we made him a junior moderator not because he became consistent and good trader, it's because he started helping so many members. I'm like, dude, this guy's a good guy. Not only is he fucking, he's humble. He also travels the world, guys. He's living his dream. He doesn't have a job. His job is trading right now. So we made him a junior moderator because you know what? That he helps people. You know, and then now, dude, his charts are better than mine. He's holding stocks. I'm like, holy shit. So dude, today I actually commented on, on Slack. Like, dude, I got to learn from you, Steve. I got to hold on to you. So congratulations <laughs> on that. And so, Thank you. so so now he went. So now I wanted to so – I talked to Alex. I said, dude, this, this guy needs a promotion. So, I mean, this is not a corporation, actually, where he's making thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. This is more of like a ceremonial thing. And uh, he's going to be trading for the rest of his life now, Steve. You are on your way to trade for the rest of your life. <laughs> We are promoting you to a full blown moderator, man. So congratulations, wow. Steve. We love you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank for you, all brother. You do. Yeah. So, 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 so uh, tell, tell them what, what's going on. So tell them about yourself and awesome and what you do and all this stuff. Go. Sure. Well, first of all, I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, my passion is obviously traveling, uh, trading, and I love helping people. So this is like a perfect fit for me. I want to get to more countries, do more meetups. I really want to meet more of these members and do fun stuff and cool stuff, and I'm really excited. And I really appreciate the promotion. It's just awesome. Um, so right now, I'm in Markeska, Croatia, and here's the view from my balcony. It's a beautiful coastal town. If you've never been to Croatia, I really recommend it. It's just amazing. Um, this weekend, I'm planning a trip. I'm going to Spain. I'm not sure where, Palma, Ibiza. Um, Alcantar, maybe. I'm, I'm really not sure yet, but I'm, I'm going to book the tickets there tomorrow. So, yeah, I travel. Funded by your training? I, Funded by your training? <laughs> sorry? Oh, yeah. So, I, I basically, like, I quit my – we did a YouTube interview about this, like, uh, I don't know, a while back. But I quit my job a couple years ago. I left the U.S. I kind of had enough of the rat race, and I'm like, man, I'm just going to, like, you know, do follow my passion. I love trading and traveling. I'm just going to follow it. So, I just left the country, and I've been uh, doing it ever since. And I found a home at MIC. Like I said, I brought a lot of bad habits. But after so many charts with EMAs and Bao and all the guys are slapping me, hey, get that stuff off your chart. So I dedicated myself to the MIC process 100%. And, uh, you know, it's not overnight. It takes a little time. But everything turned around, and I couldn't be happier. I mean, I, you know, it's just it's life-changing. MIC is the best thing that – one of the best things that ever happened to me. I mean, it's just Let, let me ask amazing. you, where, where was I, – I've never asked you this. So, like, today – are you green today? Uh, yeah. You green yesterday? Uh, yeah, I think I had a red day. I I think I had one last week. <laughs> so how many red days a month now are you fucking doing? Um, I mean, honestly, I, I want to say like between one and three, maybe four. Oh, but fuck. like the, the way I really, the thing that really helped me is not so much focusing like profit it's just like making good charts making good charts process, so it process. sounds yeah it process like it sounds crazy but when i was focused and amin taught me this like if you're if you need the money and you're focused on the money you're not going to make much money so now like i do track i save all my charts i take a, a photo of my pnls and just to put it in the records and i go back to my charts and i study them later but really like i just try to trade well and and i tell new people all the time like when you come in 
and you say, I need to make money, I'm going to make so I'm like, man, you got to slow down, focus on your education first, and money second, because when yep. people are focused on their money first, they're not going to make money. And exactly. Amin taught me that and it, it was a kick in the ass, but it's, it's dead on true. You need to focus on process and education. And that's where MIC comes in. Yep. And if you think you could join for a month and learn everything and then go make money, I mean, you've really, <laughs> you got to dedicate yourself to MIC. And I keep saying this again and again, and some people listen, some people don't, but yep. you know, exactly. monthly you could, you could check it out. But I mean, really you gotta, you gotta commit yourself. I mean, correct. It adds yeah. up fast, right, Steve? You, you know, it adds up quick. I yeah. mean, when you, when you don't have these big losing days, and when you lose, you know, your days are not big either. They're, they're, they're not big loser days because you have proper risk management. I see that on your charts. Yes, yes, yeah. I keep, I keep a max daily loss. I've got a max daily shares. I've got stop losses. I've got an uh, auto liquidation for one stock versus a daily uh, loss. I mean, you've, that's smart. That's you know, smart. it's all about risk management. It's all about risk management. Without that, that, you're not going to make it. And that's, that's basically something that you never had before. I mean, that most players no. never have that. And, and no. I remember because I'm the same way as you. You're like, fuck, man. I lost a month of work, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tough, yeah. yeah. And, then that's, and that's why people quit because not only financially, it's the mental strain of like, I can't, I'm like, what, what the hell am I doing, right? I take one yeah. step forward and three steps back. So right. I beat it. I beat into all the members, including Steve, including myself, including Alex. Risk management, risk management, max yeah. daily loss. No one teaches that except MIC. Because everyone else yeah. is revenge training, revenge training. They have million dollars of losses, right? And then I was like, dude, I never want to experience that again, guys. Never. I mean, walk the fuck away. You can have one bad day. Do not have a fucking bad life, right? <laughs> because of one bad trade. So. Right, right. And, yeah, and my so, opinion. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. My opinion, two things you need in trading, and especially if you're new, but you need it no matter what. Education and risk management. Yep. That's it. Yeah, I mean, people are like, what's the secret sauce? What, you know, what do I do? And that's it. Yep. Education, risk management. So that's the thing. So you've been doing this. So you went from an unprofitable kind of stupid Forex trade. I, I call every Forex trader stupid. Cause you know, I, I don't know any single. <laughs> and crypto. Trader. Yeah. Crypto too. Yeah. I, I traded yeah. crypto too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you traded everything that was kind of scammy, right? I'm not going to get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, you know, but whatever, but, uh, but, but so Steve actually is, Trade off a laptop? Tell, tell us about your laptop. Yeah, so like what I do is I've got, here it is here. I've got a little laptop, and what I do is I, I don't want to carry a big setup when I travel, so I HDMI it into a TV, and then I split screen it, and then I can see everything there. This place, I'm only here a few days, so the TV is not so big, but usually when I go to an Airbnb, uh, I want to see like a big big TV, and I usually pick that one. <laughs> how, how, much is, how much is your rental today? So here's the thing, like I... Generally, and people are usually surprised, but I've been traveling around Europe and the Middle East for the last uh, little over two years, and I basically my monthly expenses are between two and three thousand bucks. That's now, if lot, I trade, that's a lot, but that's a lot though for over there. Well, no, but that's like everything. I mean, that's rent, that's food, that's like uh, taxis, Airbnb, uh, uh, Uber. I mean, if you could think of it, those are all my expenses alcohol. dialed in. Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> that's going out. That's dinners. I mean. That's like everything. Now, when I'm in some areas like Turkey or Eastern Europe, like not Croatia, but nearby here, <laughs> Croatia is expensive, but I could spend even a thousand or fifteen hundred a month. So it really depends on where you were. I'm just saying like an average. But so, uh, it's so have, so I mean, my lifestyle basically now. So now you kind of stress free trading because you know, yeah, uh, only takes days to make your money, you know, you, if you do it right, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. And so, and when you make it, you are fucking not giving that shit back. That's the key, guys. When you make it, do not give that shit back. It's right. like your fucking booty tight as hell in prison, right? Keep that booty tight. As hell. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it tight. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you're, you're fucking living the dream that people are, want. So, this is the thing, guys. We always talk about, you know, man, supplement your income. Steve right now is basically... As a U.S. citizen, his supplement his income, which is no, no income, to travel the world. <laughs> but I mean now, but now that you're you're stacking now, right, bro? I mean, you must be stacking now, saving some money up, and then, you know, I, yeah. So days, my savings man. actually, I've got. I left with about what I thought would be two years of of uh, you know money to to survive, and I figured, hey, if I make it, I make it. If not, I'm gonna have an experience of my life, right? But right now, my bank accounts have uh, a little bit more than when I left. 
Dude, including yeah, yeah. yeah. So you not only save money, you are living your life, bro. <laughs> I fucking, I fucking so I could people. probably survive out here if I stopped trading right now for another two, three years, maybe. Dude, that's awesome, man. When so people you, ask, when, like, when are you coming back? I'm like, well, I'll come back to visit. I don't know if I'm moving back. <laughs> So, so it's only been like what a year since since you won the lifetime. Um, I don't remember. Year, I think right? it was yeah, less than a year. Yeah, shit, man. So all that time, dude. You you you. So tell us the real learning learning curve, okay? So the thing is, Steve had a worse learning curve. And he has to unlearn all the bad right. things. Yeah. He learned from some other bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So talk about the what they can expect. What can people expect to, to get from where you got horrible bad? experience if that happens all that to be where you are today uh you mean like how i got here or what changed so tell uh, tell the people like if they were to join what can they expect in terms of time ah. frame in terms of studying what they need to do to get so to okay here's at. the so here okay so here's my opinion if you join like fresh and you never belong to another service like uh some services i think they're not so bad but i keep hearing I got my foundation there, but couldn't get to the next level. MIC brought me to the next level. So maybe some aren't so bad, but my experience and what I mainly hear, a lot of them are scammy and you get bad habits. People come in with all these indicators and I mean, honestly, like if you use it, more power to you, but RSI and stochastics, all this kind of crazy shit, like it doesn't work. You used to use it. You used to use it. I know, because I, I, so I had to learn all this stuff. Like MIC's process is really simple. Like, and but you, the thing is, and people don't believe it, right? You're like, how could this simple shit work? No, they don't believe it, and they want to keep you. I see they send me charts with all these indicators. I'm like, well, I can't even see your chart. You gotta. <laughs> people think it's complicated because you're making money. It should be hard, but when you overcomplicate things, like the thing is, scammy services. They they oversell these indicators or they sell you the indicators because they want to make you think like it's easy if you just follow this A, B, and C, you'll make money. But it's not like that. You've got to learn a process. So when you join MIC. Fresh without any of that baggage, um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on you, but I've seen people start being consistent three months, could be six months. I mean, it could be a little bit longer. But when you join with all these bad habits, the quicker you dump your bad habits, the quicker you'll get consistent, in my opinion. If you hold on to them for a year and just forget about it, if you can't use basic risk management and aren't dedicated to your education, then honestly, like, I hate to, like, I hope this doesn't hurt, but just don't join MIC. It's, it's just, you're, you're looking for pumps. You're, you're not going to get rich quick. Right. So, like, you got to work. You can't become, like, you can't go to college for free in one day. I mean, you've got to dedicate yourself to it. It's yep. a thousand times easier than being a doctor, but it still takes some work. Yep. And the thing is, man, now, now you learn a skill for life, bro. Right. I mean, that, and no one can take thing. that from you. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need a, to have a, to be pumped to. You don't need to follow anybody. You are now a self-sufficient trader, can wake up. This is the thing I love the most, to empower someone, because this is the feeling I got when I became consistently profitable, to be, have, I call it like an X-Men superpower, to be able to make money, dude. <laughs> I mean, I, seriously, I wake yeah. up, when I wake up in the morning, I expect to make money. Seriously, right. if I don't make money, I'm like, what the fuck is going wrong? What, what the hell is going on? You know, if I don't make money, what's going on? I expect to make money. This is how good this is how good the process is. You know, you, yeah. you don't make money all the time, obviously. But you don't wake up like before thinking, oh, I, I don't know if I'm going to make money. It's 50-50. I want to gamble, right? I want to gamble. So, so you actually now can go anywhere in the world with a laptop and fucking make money, dude. That's a superpower, bro. <laughs> it is. And people think, like, it's just some crazy guy on the internet or it's not possible. But, like... I mean, there's people watching this like Doris, who is one of my buddies, ex-wives. And like these people are normal people and they know me for my normal life. And they know what I've been doing for the last two years. This isn't something that isn't accomplishable. I mean, you could accomplish it. You just need to, if it's your dream, you just need to follow it. You have and you to don't need real, to use, yeah, you don't you need to use the money to travel. Too. You could follow yeah. like whatever dreams you have. I mean, even just supplemental income is great. Who doesn't want to make another 500 or grand or two a week? Yep. I yep. mean, like. That's life. That's life changing money for most life people. Life changing, man. Right. And, and 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 the thing is, you have to be realistic, right? These guys are being scammed by the lifestyle services. Yeah. That's the, drive a right. Lambo. I mean, so when they, yeah. so I get guys that coming from these pump services, and the yeah. first week they're complaining to me. Actually, this is the, I'm like, Bow, I'm not consistent. What the fuck is going on? It's like they they they, they join. They say, Where's Lambo? Where's Lambo? Where's my Lambo? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, bro, uh, it's been one week. You have not watched a single video. 
all you're doing is gambling. You know, I mean, it doesn't work like that, guys. You get what you put in. So there's two ways yeah. to trade. Actually, it's one way to trade that works. But uh, uh, the, the way is to learn, educate, like Steve says, educate and risk management. The other way, I don't call it trade. I call it gambling. And that's the Lambo, <clears throat> yeah. the Lambo yeah. expectation. You ex- right. It's like being a doctor. You know, like, dude, we make more, we, you can make more money trading within one hour than most doctors make, okay? But doctors go to school for 12 years. And you expect to become a doctor, you know, by 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 what? By reading a Wikipedia one page, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they have expectations. So Steve, how long did it take you? Tell people like real estate, like your you know, your four experience, and then your MIC experience, and then getting rid of habits. Like the months, how many months? Well, yeah. yeah. So so for me, I mean, I traded like crypto and forex. I don't know. I want to say. A year and a half or two years. It's so embarrassing, right? <laughs> but like hey, six months, reason. probably. Everything happens recently. I know. Yeah, I'm stubborn. Like I'm, I'm just stubborn. I'm. It's just the problem for me. You know? It was a year. If I wasn't it was stubborn, it would have been that, faster. It was me screaming. Yeah. At you, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So probably yeah, like six months. Things got better. Probably a year. I started like doing a lot. You know, pretty good. I mean, something like that. But like I said, I'm the most stubborn guy. I mean, even when I joined. At first, I was like, okay, but let me let me solidify this forex thing. Once I can make money there, I can also make money here. And just <laughs> I'm I'm like I need to learn from my mistakes. Like yep. I can't somebody can't tell me and I'll learn. I need to do it. That's so it's you know, good that's and it's bad. Big, but this is a big conflict. That's because you're that's because you're too smart, man. The smart people always <laughs> think they know what they're doing. So yeah. you know, it takes a lot. For the, the smarter you are, the bigger ego you have. The longer it takes you to unlearn bad habits, that's that's it. Yes, you know, like I still, exactly. I still, yeah. I, have a, I still have a lot of bad habits, bro. So, 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 <laughs> so, how long did it take you to unlearn them? Ah, uh, to unlearn it, I want to say a good six months. I mean, I remember sending some charts to Amin before he was a moderator, and I would say like, like, because I saw his trading was awesome, and he would like give me some pointers, and he's like, bro. Don't send me any of these EMAs. <laughs> Take these off your charts. And I'm like, the okay. EMA he's is, like, the, uh, is the exponential moving average, by the way. Yes, yeah. If, it, so if just, it works for you, it works for you. But it does not work for our style. It doesn't work for our style. So, yeah, I mean, if it works for you, great. But for most, I think it's just, you know, it clutters so, your screen, right? So EMA, EMA is actually for longer-term trading. Yes, swing, swing trades, trade. long-term. Yeah. But we yeah. are not intra- for stopping. intraday, intraday uh, day trading. It made yeah. it work. Swing trading, it, it's, yeah, they could use it for that. It's great. But I was showing him scalping charts with EMAs and all this crap. And, I mean, I'm <laughs> glad he was blunt because he was like, bro, don't send me any charts with this stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I took it off. But, yeah, it took me a, few, a, a little while because I'm stubborn. So six months you started to take it off. And then how yes. – so, so, what, so what happened and once you took it off? What did you start doing? What did you start I, using? How did you start, you know? I, I honestly just gave up on, like, the other stuff I had learned, and I started following the process. I mean, it's sad to say, but even six months into it, I was kind of like, wait, when this hits this EMA, I'm going to short. You know, it was like, <laughs> why don't you just follow the lines, bro? Like, I don't know, because I'm, I'm stupid sometimes, you know? Because you don't believe so, like, it. So, I, I didn't believe it was that easy. Yeah. I didn't believe it was that easy. So I, I still get that today, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, the, the hardest part is like, how could this fucking work? It, can, it cannot be this simple. You know, yeah. it's like, so my, so I tell everybody, small size, tiny size, do it repetition over and over until you believe it. You know? Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like, it's like your kid, right? You touch the stove once, you don't believe it's hot. You have to keep right. touching it until you burn your whole fucking hand off. <laughs> then you don't yeah. touch it again. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. So now, now you put fancy orders in, you trust that shit, right? Yeah, so now, like, I'm a thousand percent dedicated to the MIC process. I don't have any issues with, with any of the old habits. Um, the only thing that I learned before that was beneficial was, like, a little bit of volume, like, understanding volume a little. But honestly, 99% of what I learned is all wasted time. <laughs> Just wasted. Because, wasted. Because, you, because you know what, man? We are carrying such small uh, positions in terms of relations to hedge funds that – we are actually nimble enough to go in and out. And so that's yeah. why we don't need all these fancy long-term shit because you cannot get rid of 50 million shares in one day. So they use EMAs, they use all these fucking Fibonacci, whatever the hell they use, right? But 
right. but for us right. we have the advantage i mean uh making a thousand dollars a day is a dream for many people but making a thousand dollars if you if you notice man that doesn't doesn't take that much size you know if you it adds up very quickly guys so so that's why these indicators it may work for you but that's why i don't use them because first of all the key the key to anything in life is simplicity you know i was an engineer the best designs are not the overcomplicated designs. They're the most simplistic designs. That's where the genius comes. People think that if you see someone talking all fancy, they don't know shit. I'm very yeah. college educated. I have, I have degrees in engineering, math, philosophy. But you know, I don't come off as a fucking scholar. But if you want me to debate scholar stuff or mathematical fucking shit, I can. And I'm like, beat you at it. So I see these guys trying to create new mathematical bullshit. They didn't even go to fucking finish high school algebra, you know? <laughs> and, and that's the thing, guys. I call it keep it simple, stupid. KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. I was that from engineering. Um, what? The answer to most things in life is the most obvious, simplistic answer. Do not overthink. You know? Do not over-fucking think. Uh, trade what you see. You know? <laughs> that's what it is. The lines are what you see. So I'm glad, Steve. I mean, dude. So... Tell us your, tell me your, your plan now for the future. What is your goal for trading? Like, how, do you have plans to like, how do you increase size? What is your goal to, to get to the next step? Or to be honest, you don't need to get to the next step, guys. Most people are yeah. happy making what they're making. Don't get into this belief that you have to compete with anybody else except yourself. You know? So, it's, it's, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, for me, uh, a lot of people might think it's strange, but I, like, when you travel, you're kind of a nomad. You can't really be attached to material things because like my car, I, I left it and my parents took over the payment and it's theirs now. I mean, I, I don't, I, I can't like travel. My most valuable possession is like my laptop, right? <laughs> like I don't have yeah. Yeah. anything valuable cause that's the life I, I want to live it. right now. I want to travel I and it. I want freedom. I love it. Kiss, so kiss, that being keep said, it keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. And I, I don't like a lot of stress. I mean, the reason I quit my job was to get away cause I, I used to develop real estate, right? I developed shopping malls and, condos and hotels and I it's a uh, fun but stressful right so I wanted to get away from all that I wanted to simplify my life honestly I had some uh, AFib which is like heart palpitations a couple years back and I said man I got to get rid of the stress so they did a surgery they fixed it and I said man I just need to like live my dream and have like as little stress as possible so for profit life, life is short man life I, is short yeah, like it's all about your freedom and, and enjoying your life as far as I'm concerned. So for profits, I don't even have this crazy goal to make like a lot of money. I just want to bank two to five grand a month. I could do whatever I want with that. I could put a little in savings. I mean, even if I ever got to like a really high level of trading uh, with skill, I probably won't even put a lot of size on because I just don't need the stress. It's just, it's based on your personality. Some guys could handle that stress well. But I just need a little money to to just live my life. Five grand a month, maybe a little more. Your your, your little money is a lot of money from MC. <laughs> no, real estate, right? Life is all about being. Yeah. It's perspective. So let me tell you my story. Right. So, back when I was young, dude, I was I want to make the most money. Bang, bang, bang. And I actually went down <laughs> in size significantly. I'm I'm like Steve now. I'm like, man, I don't want this fucking stress. I have I have this famous yeah. thing. I said, uh, you only you only need to get rich once. Once you yeah. get there, don't fucking lose it. I don't want to be the guy that's the bounce back kid. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, fuck, no, no. Like I'm down a million, up a million, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, dude, you only need to get rich once. Once you get rich, fucking lock that shit up like tighter than right. a butthole in prison, right? So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I, I downsided. And so basically I'm training to port my drinking habits or whatever it may be, right? <laughs> <laughs> which is still a lot, you know, like today, I mean, I made good money last weekend today, you know, so, I mean, my drinking habits are larger than most, but uh, I'm just joking about the drinking, but maybe, but, um, but you know what, man, you trade to your own <laughs> lifestyle, there's no competition, yeah. and that's the right. problem before, because in trading, you can never be the top, you make a million dollars a day, a million dollars a day, every day, you will be yeah. nothing compared to Steve Cohen, who makes billions of a year, right, so, so there is, so I realized in life, I mean, dude, I, my biggest day, this was, Jesus, this is like almost 10 years ago. That's a lot of money 10 years ago. Okay. Like 1.4 million one day, four hours. Wow. <laughs> 10 years ago. 
you imagine with, with inflation, how much that would be back then, right? Like three, four million, right? So, I mean, nowadays, it's so basically, that 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 actually was a one of the happiest of trading days, but also the saddest because I'm like, now what? Now yeah. what? I didn't make it did not make me happy. I realized that now what, man? I I, I fucking was. Dude, I didn't take a vacation for years. My, you know, I went through a divorce. It, it, it was fucking miserable. I, I was the richest of my life, making more money than I could possibly ever fucking spend. Each day, I was making fifty thousand dollars a day. Like waking my and like, dude, for what? IRS takes most of it. My ex-wife took most of it. <laughs> you know? And so, so then I realized, you know, what, man, it's not worth it. It was only for ego. And it's like a video game with no ending. I hate those video games because I love, I mean, I love role-playing games. I stopped playing because I could play that shit for three years and there'll be no ending. You're a level 1,000 barbarian. Now you're level 2,000. I mean, there's no ending. <laughs> you right? <laughs> and so it's got like, it's an endless game of high scores. And so, so the moment you realize perspective, how much $100 really is, guys? You make $1,000 a day, $500 a day. Go walk into a normal store, Target, Costco. Can you fucking spend that? I mean, just being a normal human being, right? Not buying some stupid Gucci shit, but like Steve says, man, fucking two to five thousand a year, you can travel the fucking world. Um, you can't I'm go a, to fucking yeah, you can't go London or Paris, but fuck. <laughs> uh, Western Europe, yeah, you you know, I mean, you need a little bit more for sure, but, but like but that's a, but generally, that's the thing. yeah, yeah. So average, I mean. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you guys, man. So when I'm looking at my P and L, seriously, when I make some days, I make it so easy, guys. Like I make five grand so easy, right? And I'm I'm five grand within 15 minutes. I'm like, seems fucking too easy. And I'm getting greedy. I'm like, why can't I make 10? Why can't I make 20? And that's how you lose your money back. But then when I go and think about this, fuck, man, how can I spend five thousand dollars in fucking one day? I mean, even if I fucking tried, unless I'm buying stupid shit, obviously. But I can eat the best restaurants. Two hundred dollars for myself, three hundred bucks, five hundred bucks. Let's buy a fancy ass bottle of wine, thirty dollar bottle of wine. It's still not gonna be five thousand. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be in your lifestyle, but that's my point. This is why each week I walk at into a Costco to remind myself how much a hundred dollars really is. Because when I was young, man, hundred dollars like holy shit. You know that you're allowed for a fucking month, right? Uh, and so I'm looking at these iPods, huh, hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> eh, I'm like, dude, 150 dollars. That's my locate bill, you know? <laughs> you know? But my commissions these days are like 500, 800 dollars a day, right? And so I'm like, but then in real life, I'm like, hmm, 200 dollars for an iPod? Pro, fuck that shit. <laughs> so, so that's why. So that Alex keeps a stack of one dollars on his desk for that reason, to remind him. But that's also because uh, some other reason that he needs ones. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, that's exactly what it is, man. You have to humble yourself, guys. You know, when I was making that much money back then, I was looking at guys making more money. I'm like, and I'm like, fuck, dude. You know? So you have to, this is a secret of trading also. You have to be equated back to reality. And that's what keeps you in check. That's what keeps you from blowing up. You know? You have goals. You have payments too. You know? My goal is to make $1,000 so I can pay my payments this year, whatever it may be, right? This month. So, you know, when you make it, lock it up, things like that. So, but great. Any last advice, Steve? Do the kids help yeah, them? I mean, I do. So like, and I, I say it all the time, like to people I'm gaming or in main uh, after hours. But here's the thing. If you're struggling, I mean, there's no secret. It's really simple. And Bao said it earlier. You need to size down, trade smaller shares, use maybe wider stops if you're getting stopped out all the time, and dedicate yourself to education first. Yeah, because you know what, man? I, I see guys trading strategies that do not work, but they don't know it yeah. doesn't work. So they're chasing down the wrong rabbit hole all the time. Right. Such as Steve was trying to make EMAs work for day trading. I mean, when yeah. shit doesn't work, it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> you know? And so yeah. you, you have to learn from someone that's been there that shows you that these are the proven strategies. So, so that's why it's very difficult. You're trying to reinvent the wheel. The wheel's already been invented. <laughs> it's invented. It's, it's, and it's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's simple. It's not even simple. Yeah, the hardest thing is simple. the mental, right? The mental. The so, mental, the risk management part. That was probably my biggest struggle, and, and I struggled with that for a while. Uh, we it's all not easy. Struggle that. We all struggle yeah. that. And you know how you mitigate it, guys? Do not trust yourself. You have to have the broker checks that you do, right? 
because we we break our fucking rules every fucking day and think we can get away with it. Oh shoot, Steve went dead. Croatia, end of that. <laughs> hey, you back, Steve? I'm back. Sorry. Oh no, bad problem. connection. Yeah, Croatia, bro. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, Croatia. I, so, so I told, I, I was talking about humans cannot be trusted, man. You have to put the broker yeah. checks in. It's like having a, yeah. a seatbelt and an airbag yeah. and a bumper in front of you. If you want to go racing, put on your seatbelt. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the seatbelt alone won't work. You need an airbag and a bumper. Airbag, so, yeah. So you need many forms of checks, right? Right. So, so Steve not only has tell, – tell us all your, your, your checks before we log off. Ah, so I've got uh, max daily loss, auto liquidation, and then I've got max loss per ticker. Awesome. Right, and that's a diff different amount. Yeah, so I can't lose more than X amount on one ticker. Then I can't lose X amount in a day. It all auto liquidates me, okay? Uh, second, so, I always you, use stops. Sorry. You have stops. That's good. So you have four checks. Yeah, I always, <laughs> always use stops, and I've got to max shares because I talked to somebody a while back who put on twenty-five thousand shares by accident and you know had a bad day. So I use the max shares. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do that too. I have max shares uh, on my account. So, um, so you don't want to hit the wrong key. Yeah. Um, so how, how what is your max loss at? How many days of losses? Two. So it's two, two for good. my max. It's two for my max, and it's like a little or around one for my each ticker. That's smart, bro. That's smart. You see how he does it? Yeah. On his worst days, he does not want to get back more than two days of hard work. And that's how you do it. Man. And not more than one day on one ticker. Yeah. If a ticker is not treating me right, I'm done with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it can't hurt me that bad. So that I, and this is what I noticed about Steve, and this is what changes trading, in my opinion, is the fact that. He went from a guy with absolutely no risk management whatsoever to now being the guy that's like oh, overly riskful, which is good. Yeah. And trading is right. fucking good. And he listened to yeah. all we said to implement that guy. So great, bro. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I learned it the hard way because I was stubborn. You guys don't need to be so stubborn. You don't need to think yeah. you're so smart. You need to humble yourself, come in fresh, learn everything you can, dedicate yourself to MIC. Be in it for the long, for the long haul. I mean, if you just join on a month, I don't know what you're going to learn in a month. You got to dedicate yourself to the community, dedicate right. yourself to education, risk management first. P and L is later. The more you focus on it before you know what you're doing, the more you're going to get in trouble. Yep. So. All right. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you back in the room. It. Appreciate Thank you. you. Congrats, congrats, man. You're you're now with the MIC forever. So. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate right. you guys' support. All right, guys. Thanks, and if, guys. If you're on the fence, give him MIC a shot. Yep. And we get in. Steve is probably the first guy to say hello to you. So that's, that's why it's awesome. I am. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thanks, Steve, man. Keep kicking ass, brother. Thank Have you. Fun, I appreciate it, brother. All right, man. Thank you. Bye. All right. See ya. All right, all right, guys. That's it. We'll see you back in the room. You heard it from the man. Congrats, Steve. He's, he's one of the best human beings out there, man. He helps everybody in MIC. Seriously, man. He's always happy. So. Uh, he's living his dream, and you guys can too. See you guys.